This video is made for adult collectors because something something the last night sucks. Lord Megatron. Currently, on TF Safari, this is on flash sale or has been for a while, but it is going right now for about 80 US dollars. That is less than the price of an American Commander class. That's honestly insane. This is a knockoff of Unique Toys Dragoon, but the interesting thing is this feels a lot like a Unique Toys product. So not outstanding, but not terrible. And for 80 bucks, that's a lot of toy you're getting. It's not without fault though, but it is still pretty damn good. But as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, this was sent to me by TF Safari. They sell a wide range of third party and knockoff things, and sometimes they have official products. They have added some more stuff to their flash sale, so you can get this guy for 80. He was 100, which I think is still a pretty good price for what you're getting. But they have tons of new third party stuff available, and some reissues of older products popping up, so I definitely recommend go checking them out. And if you use code that toy guy special 3% off, Yep, you can save a couple dollars on your purchase, which always helps. The link will be in the description. So thank you very much for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the actual toy. Gonna start off with this though, by saying all the things I had to fix out of the box when I got it, because, you know, knock off, there's no quality control. The knees were loose, they were on screws though, so I just had to tighten those up and then I fixed it. The elbows were loose and like, because the transformation joint relies on a backwards hinge on a screw screwed it back in, fixed that right up. And then the mandibles, one of them's a little loose on the one side of mine and I haven't fixed that yet, but I just need to put some polish in there to fix it. I just haven't had time because this arrived the day before I left to LA. So like I haven't had a chance to fix everything on it, but like the mandibles, it's, it's, there's like a square peg on the inside, so they have enough friction, but the design is weird. So if you have to shave some material off to make it work sometimes, but if you do do that, please make sure you shave it off little by little. That's about it though, for the extent of the out of box issues. And seeing as this is a KO, this is something I would expect. So I'm not fully mad about having to repair some stuff, but looks wise, man, this looks amazing. This to my knowledge is the only time a third party company has tried a last night Megatron at this scale and they nailed most of the design. The dragon shapes, the knight armor, the points are all there. Most points aren't actually super sharp, which is nice. And stoically standing there, he looks superb. His cannon arm though, doesn't go as far towards the body as I would like due to his asymmetric chest sculpt. There's a bit of that sculpt sticking out and it bumps into the arm and I'm not a fan of that. The level of detail for an early Unique Toys product is pretty good though. All the sculpted lines and the shapes are there and the paint is there to match. But like any Unique Toys product, once you get him moving, the joints don't actually have any detail to them. Leaving all of this blank space exposed I'm not the biggest fan of that. I really wish they sculpted the joints. Head sculpt is perfect though. You have his scowl, but I prefer the mask. That's just me though. And he does have LEDs, but as I'm getting this done right after coming back from LA, I don't have a chance to buy any batteries. His cannon also lights up. Speaking of the cannon, the chain is really nice. It's metal, but it feels high quality for the price and it doesn't get in the way at all. And his sword can mount on his back and he can hold it. The Akakalaka though is sharp, so please be careful. Then there's the shield which gets stuck in his arm. I need to sand the peg down a bit, but it is a nice inclusion, like the little concept art thing. I like that. I just don't put it in his arm because the one time I did, it took me 20 minutes just to get the peg out. This guy's pretty well balanced too for having slightly rounder bottom feet and being as big as he is, I'm not super worried about him falling over. He has a very flat and stable base. His posing though is a bit strange. So for being a really, really early Unique Toys product, his posing's pretty good, but it's not quite there yet for what they do nowadays but like it's still pretty like it does pretty much almost the same as this thing so like it's still pretty good the head this is going to move a lot because it's really loose and i haven't fixed it yet head is on a ball joint it can only look down about that far though i kind of wish i could look down a little bit further and up can only go that far just due to how his bucket's shaped but you do get some really nice tilt to it and obviously rotation shoulder pads are on ball joints both of them and they're on hinges. I've unpegged the chest. There we go. But you can lift them up. The arms can go up that far. They can rotate forward and back. You have a, like a middle elbow rotation, kind of like Combiner Wars hotspot. But it is like 
it, it still it still accomplishes what it needs to do. But then the elbows can go this way because transformation. Oops! Don't push down on him. He'll do the splits. The wrist can swivel and it can hinge in and out. The thumb is on a ball joint and a hinge. And then there is a is that a ball joint? No, it's a hinge. There's hinges, three hinges at each finger, so you can get a full curl, but you can't splay it. I kind of wish you could, but you know, you can't. And all the fingers are the exact same length because it's cheaper to make all the fingers the exact same length. Kind of wish they were like this, but you know, whatever. He does, he can T-pose. He does have a waist joint. Um, these do bump into bits, but you can pull them down to allow the whole waist to rotate. They're spring-loaded, which is weird, but you know, whatever. They are on ball joints. These can go forward and back and spin in and out like that to accommodate the legs going forward that far. Normally, if you move the leg out a bit, it can go forward all the way. Yeah. It can go back about that far. The butt flap does move slightly and the hip skirts rotate with the leg, which is a bit of a strange choice, but at the same time, it kind of makes it like stay uniform, which is kind of nice. Uh, you do have thigh rotation. Oh, the legs do go out. They're a little heavy, but when he's in a pose, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. That's a pose, right? I don't know. I just bumped my light. Uh, he does have thigh rotation. I just unpegged the knee. The knee can bend all the way on a single joint. It's a friction hinge, but like it's a nice friction hinge and it's a screw right there. So if it gets a little loose, like mine was out of the box, you can just tighten it, but the knees can bend that far. And then the toes can go forward. The toes are die cast and you do have ankle tilt, sort of. A little little tiny ankle tilt. Then you can bend this down a little bit to get a little bit more ankle pivot. So there is that. When you do use the ankle pivot though, these bits like to come undone from their little tiny little pegs. So when I do the ankle pivot, I grab from down here and the toe and then pivot. You do get a little bit of a click, but that's so that these don't like fall out of place. But he is pretty poseable. I just wish the hips were a tiny bit more poseable so you could get him and say like a kneeling pose because he does that quite a lot in the movie. So that's the robot. Looks great, poses all right, and is intimidating. But it is transformation intimidating? Well, so transfer, oh, okay, yeah. He's, um, he doesn't, he doesn't fit the, the, the frame. There we go. That is as far as my arms are gonna go from the camera. And the camera is like against my chest. This is fun. Anyways, this is gonna be difficult for me to do at arm's length, but I will try my best. This is not the hardest unique toys transformation to exist. This is actually, good, well, cause it's an early unique toys conversion. It's actually kinda, it's kinda easy. Bringing the back out, bringing out his back and just sit, letting it sit there. I'm gonna move this up actually. If we're getting started with upper body stuff. And then we're going to unpeg this and take this entire assembly here and to bring it back. Ah, see, I told you we'd get it. I'm gonna rotate the head 180 degrees and shift it down like that. And then we'll just bring the arms over here for now. That's a, that's a thing. Now these sections, you wanna slide them up. They're on a rail. So you slide that up like so. Bring it in. Well, no, no, before you bring it in, you want to open this section up, bring this out. Open that, fold out the nose cone, close it up, Oop. fold that out, close this up. Then you fold this section in and it will peg in to the torso. And then these will just leave here for now. We'll, we'll get that those figured out later. So once that's done, we're going to do the legs. So we're gonna take these hip skirts, we're going to open this section up fold these out, rotate them 180 degrees. Now on my copy, these were packaged backwards. They were on the wrong spot. So just on ball joints, just pop them off and pop them in the right way. But once we get that sorted, we're gonna take the butt flap, bring it around. And then these are going to sit behind it. The hip skirts, there we go. They're going to sit behind it like that and then move, but they're gonna sit there. Then we're gonna move this just out of the way for now. These, uh, his, his butt basically, you want to bring it out like that, unpeg the knee, bring it out like that, rotate this panel 180 degrees, 
on both sides and then rotate this panel 180 degrees okay on both sides there you go I swear this isn't difficult it's just because I'm, I'm, I'm there's a camera in my way once you get this done though you want to bring this section out like that and we're going to work on the lower leg so what we're going to do is you're going to open this up then you're going to open this section up and bring it around like that focus on the toy please thank you you want to then fold these back like that rotate them 90 degrees inward they will peg together like that and then you bring the foot down like so then you want to take this entire assembly swing it out like that and then you focus on the toy again please then you swing this out like so unfold the wing we're going to do that right there we have a wing all hidden away in the leg it's kind of neat actually how that works bring this up bring that up and then this will accordion its way in like so and in like that and it will sit there for now because so i'm going to do the other leg off camera so once you get that done you then take the arm and you'll peg it in underneath right here so it'll just sandwich together like so this panel will fold over the hand this will fold down and will just sort of slot itself into place then you fold up these little boosters which aren't boosters they're cannons but this jet was designed backwards so you know fold up the little wings here and then these sections they will unfold come around the hand and they'll sort of close up around it and then peg in to that flap that covers the top of the hand like so now you're supposed to take this chain and like peg it in somewhere in here but i couldn't be bothered so you fold this this handle down you peg it in to the back here and then the chain i take and i just shove it in there and we call it a day and that's jet mode so that's not the worst transformation Unique Toys has made. It borrows some placements in parts with the Voyager, which makes sense. Their Prime borrows from the Last Night Voyager as well. But the jet looks fantastic. The side cannons don't like to peg in on mine, but everything else fits pretty well together. The wingspan feels a tad short, but it doesn't ruin the look. It's just, it's a big fucking jet. I like the way the arms form the boosters, even though they don't look like boosters because this facing forward because technically this jet was designed backwards because concept blah 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 but they made an effort the bits of gold really pop here and i like it and the cockpit opens so 10 out of 10 it holds together pretty all right some parts don't want to stay in place if everything isn't 100 percent lined up in the middle like most unique toys transformations but once you get it all together squeezing it won't make bits come off which is nice it's just a nice figure for 80 bucks Yes, you got to do some minor repairs out of the box, but hey, KO, what do you expect? There's no quality control on those. Do I recommend it though? Yes, I do. I'd even recommend it at full price because it's a hundred bucks, but I'm less enthusiastic about that hundred bucks. 80 bucks is a nice spot for this to sit in and it costs less than a commander class toy, which is just awesome. And it's a lot of toy you're getting, but that's my look at Unique Toys Dragoon, the KO. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.